I look either like I'm dating Oliver Wood and I stole his jersey right before the Quidditch game, or I'm a 14th century squire and there's no in between. <laughs> Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be making a self-drafted color block top. And if you are a beginner sewist or seamster or seamstress, I'm going to go through the whole process so that you can make one too. To do this, I use DIY Daisy's rectangular sleeve top tutorial. Since it does not come with its own pattern pieces, I decided to make my own using some tracing paper. It's just helpful for me to have a physical representation of how the squares will look, especially since the first thing I did was create a mock-up. So you can see me kind of using these measurements on the screen to create a sleeve pattern and then the front and the back pattern piece. For the neckline, I used a shirt that I already owned and I liked the neckline already and kind of used that as a guide on the tracing paper. Since this was a mock-up, I did didn't feel too worried about how the neckline would come out yet. And then I made a mock-up off camera. Here's how it looked. But I was in a super grumpy mood that day and thought it looked terrible. So decided to remake it by making the body smaller but not the sleeves proportionally. So it looked like this. Um, <laughs> all that to say, we're gonna stick with the first version. So let's get started. <laughs> I started cutting out my pattern pieces and had a moment of sheer confusion. But we power through. I laid out my green linen and started to cut the front pattern. I folded it in half and gave myself an inch of seam allowance so that when I sewed the front two panels together at a half an inch seam allowance, they would both work. And this BB is going to show you more how I got the colors to work out and how I cut out my pattern so that the color blocking worked. Okay, so this is quick. <laughs> So I cut this piece for the front green panel. We need one green panel for the back. To do that, I'm going to flip this so it's the other side of the back. And make sure that when I cut the back neckline, I make it less steep than the front because in the back, you don't need it to swoop down as much as you do in the front. And I will use that back panel flipped for the other back side to make sure that the neck matches. Did that make sense? I hope so. So let's get to the other green back panel and then we can do front back panel in maroon and then sleeves. Okay, so this is the front and that is the way I cut it. So to cut the back panel, I am going to flip it, pin it down. Okay, and then I'm going to cut along the edges like normal, but cut kind of a less swoopy curve here, which I will draw out. And then I fully intended to show you how I did this, but it was completely not visible at all. <gasps> Once I had the neckline figured out, I cut out the green back panel, and then I used both of those panels as pattern pieces for the maroon front and back panel. Here's what all my pieces were looking like, and with all of them cut out, I had enough delusion to say this. I really feel like I could finish this today. Maybe. After my moment of delusion, I got to creating my front and back panels. I did this by connecting the pieces I had cut out in that middle seam with a half an inch seam allowance. To finish these, I zigzag stitched them, pressed them, and then top stitched them down the front. I decided to top stitch with the same thread color on the same fabric, even though I did have a moment where I thought it would be kind of cool to mismatch the thread. And looking back, I kind of wish I had done that because it would have looked pretty cool. Anyways, with both the front and back panels connected and finished, I connected them at the shoulder seams and called it a day. Good morning. What we need to do today? Sleeves, hem, and then we're done. That's only two things. Under, under hemming, we do have to finish this neckline, which will probably mean bias binding, which I've never done. We can do it. It's gonna be fine. Let's get to the sleeves and then we can get to hemming and then we can get to the neckline. Okay. <laughs> and then I immediately made a mistake. I attached it so that uh, the seam is on the right side, which it should be on the wrong side. I guess I could just make it a French seam. Is that how that works? I decided not to do a French seam, but please someone tell me, is that how that works? Could I have done a French seam on these shoulder panels? Anyways, moving on. I don't on. think that would work. I'm just gonna undo it. In case that messes it up more. And then I connected both panels to create the shoulder seam, and here's how it was looking. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. I've attached at the shoulders. I need to sew down this seam 
on the sleeves to connect everything and then we can hem and then we can face this problem. I pinned these sleeves and sewed them at a half an inch seam allowance. I'll be honest, the armpit gave me a little bit of trouble because it was coming out kind of looking bunched. So I made sure to snip in the armpit and iron it pretty pretty well and it came out all right so if you guys have any tips for how to do the armpit a little bit more neatly that would be appreciated but after i did both of the arms i got pretty lazy and hemmed the shirt uh, you can see here that i did a rolled hem but instead of stitching where the actual him would be. I stitched closer to the bottom of the fabric for some reason, so I might undo that and redo it to look a little bit nicer, but it looks fine on the outside. <laughs> Later that day, my husband and I sat down to watch some Gravity Falls while I crafted, and he had the audacity to say this when I tried it on in front of him. You look like a square. Yeah, see, they have like the color, like different houses will have the colors on different sides. Look at that. Hi. My husband told me this shirt looks like a squire. I haven't emotionally recovered. But that doesn't mean we don't get to finish it. Okay. I got a pack of bias tape makers. All we have left of our lovely squire shirt is this neckline. We are going to make bias binding. I have never made bias binding, but I have the audacity of someone who has watched a couple YouTube videos and now believes that I can do it. I'm gonna go ahead and measure this, figure out how to cut out of our fabric enough for bias tape, and then get started. I'm also feeling like I'm on the bridge of another Twilight era. Oh yeah. <laughs> And so with Twilight playing in the background, I got to making the bias tape. First I measured how much of each color I would need to make the neckline. And then I cut out the fabric based on that measurement. I think I must have done something wrong maybe with seam allowance because it didn't match up perfectly, but I did have a little dance break to the Twilight theme in the middle. <laughs> Once I had everything cut out in both colors of the fabric, I assembled them, sewing them together, and then I put them through the bias binding maker, which was much more difficult than I thought it would be. Maybe I cut the fabric too thick, and so it was just struggling, but it was, it was tricky. But it ended up looking pretty good, especially for my first time. Then I got to attaching it to the shirt. I focused mainly on the front, making that look neat. I mean, honestly, in the back, I'm not gonna see it, so it's, it's not a problem for me. Um, but yeah, I really wanted it to be centered and crossed at the front. Um, I got to pinning all of that and was struggling for a second. How are you supposed to have enough hands for this? <sighs> then after what seemed like an eternity of pinning this down, I got to sewing it. I moved pretty slow on this and this is how the shirt looks. I'm really happy with this shirt. I think it's super beginner friendly and it's super customizable because you could use any colors, any fabric to make this work. If you enjoyed the chaos that was this shirt, feel free to subscribe and I will see you next time you're feeling crafty. Bye. You need a... <sighs> <laughs> Drop everything. <laughs>